everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday on this nasty, rainy day here in Houston. Mm -hmm. We hope you all had a good week. Hey, 19 days left in 2020. Praise Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Made it. We're almost there. I know. Vaccinations will begin this week so we can see a light at this, the end of this very long tunnel. We have to stay vigilant for just a little while longer. Hang in there, everyone, and roll up your sleeves. When that vaccine is available, get it as right soon right as possible. We'll be the first in line. Put one here and two here. <laughs> no, just take one and then take another one three weeks later. I'm going to take four. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Well, the big news around here besides the vaccine is serial number one went to the printer yesterday. Hey, remember when we used to have to send those pages to the printer? Yes, you have to give them up into a box, put it out in the system. Yes, and we had many rough days with that. Yes. One, one whole issue of Strangers in Paradise came back dripping wet in the FedEx box. Literally, the guy handed it to us and it was dripping wet. Yes, Strangers in Paradise number eight of nine. volume two. Nine. I think, I think it was nine. The one that I had tried so hard to draw really well in, so I love the art pages. And that's the one that was lost. No, it was drip. It was wet. And then they did lose. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. press lost like issue two or something of the miniseries, didn't they? Yeah, and there was, we'll look for it. It's around here somewhere. It ended up being in the dead letter office in Atlanta. Amazing that it got back to us. It took almost a year to get it back. It just We gave up and it just showed up. Yeah. Oh. Nice scary. to just be able to send the files. I know. Now I can just, I, I got it, and I just hang on to it. And many a, many a night, you were driving to the airport to the final FedEx drop-off. Yes. At 10 o'clock at night or something, drawing in the car. And a lot of self-publishers have the exact same story of racing to the FedEx to meet that 10 o'clock deadline. Uh, and Burt Breath at Bloom County did the same thing back in those days, because Back in those days, before the internet stuff, it was just trucks yeah. and planes. Yeah. So you had to go, get, your deadline was when the plane left. Yeah. Files are nice, aren't they? Files are nice. Files are good. <laughs> that sounds like, you know, the 19th century stuff now. Well, okay. Anyway, back to serial number one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It went to Brenner Printing yesterday. We're glad to be back on that track. Mm -hmm. I think this may be the first issue in 27 years that you actually got done early. <laughs> this issue is due Monday, tomorrow. And we just wanted to start off on the right foot, especially since you have to get the book to Diamond in a certain time in order to make this uh, uh, the, the activity before they shut down for the holiday. So we didn't want to be in, tra in trouble so we but don't. I think it was—it may have been the first time in 27 years you actually got a book done early. Wow. How's that feel? Tiring. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 uh, I stayed up uh, all night to finish it. And uh, at one point the night before, I was inking on it. And I just, I was tired of just being in here by myself. And I live streamed it on YouTube. So... You can look on this channel and see about an hour and a half of live stream inking this, you know. Well, I'm glad you got it done early. Honey. Me too. That's amazing. That's an amazing accomplishment. Thank you for your encouragement. To and, do it. and it should be available in stores mid-January, I think. So watch watch out for that. Okay. Also, um, this is a 10-issue series. If you want to subscribe to the entire 10 issues, go to the website today to subscribe. Today is the last day, folks. There mm -hmm. is no subscribing for nine issues or eight issues or seven issues. It's it's one and done. No partial subscriptions. No. You can do it now or forever hold your peace. Okay. So go to the website today to get that done if you're interested. If you're not, please go to your local comic book shop and have them order it or put in your pull box or uh, pick it up on the stands. Uh, we need to support those, those local comic shops as well. Um, in, the, uh, in other news, let's see, the last day to get an order shipped from us before Christmas is Friday, December 18th, this coming Friday, because um, no orders will be shipped during Christmas week. We're shutting down for Christmas week this year, folks. So... Um, you don't want to go to the warehouse on Christmas Eve? I don't. I don't. <laughs> so, 
Friday, Friday, Friday is the last day. So um, be sure to place your order. I know USPS is really struggling getting all these, um, these shipments moving because everybody's doing online shopping this year. So we can't guarantee that it will be there before Christmas, but we will ship it out on Friday and um, you'll get tracking information. So uh, that's the best we can do, I'm afraid. It's As you were saying that, I hear an Amazon truck outside. Or a FedEx truck. That Amazon or FedEx. Yeah. They, have, they sound the same. So uh, Christmas is upon us and the new year is right around the corner. And uh, so things are moving forward, folks. This is yes. good. I'm so glad for this year to pull to an end and we're still standing. We are. We may be hobbled, but we're still standing. Yeah. We're limping, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do you have anything to add, Mr. Ward? Uh, well, you talked about Serial One, and I guess somebody should mention that these books are still available. Um, this is the new book that I have out right now. Um, so it's Ever, and you can get it in the soft cover and the hard cover on our website now. There's still some of these hard covers left, I believe, right? I think we have about, I want to say 60 left, and this is probably a one and done. So if you want a hard cover, get it now. Um, Okay, and this is a good one to have because it also serves as a whack a tool um, if you're bothered by moles. But um, yeah, very sturdy, lasts forever. <laughs> Hand it to your grandkids. Um, again, excellent weapon. Stop talking. <laughs> I'm just trying to come up with perks. You know, when you buy some things, you get extra perks. Oh, oh, yeah, it's been a Look, long year. It it's been a long year, guys. This tail uh, registered. Okay, let's move on. Now it's an actual pet. Okay, uh, are you ready to get on the hot seat? No, but yes, bring it, yes. Okay, uh, this is our last question in the uh, from Tony about the oh. uh, actor studio. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, I would love to be a... Uh, an award-winning television writer of his own show. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to write a hit television show. So you'd like to kind of do TV writing, huh? Yeah, I would. I would very much be interested in that format. When I work on, when I do scripts, I use Final Draft, which is the same writing program as uh, screenwriters use. And um, I'm dialogue oriented, you know, and I know I just kind of fit the, requirement mode for that. So I think I would uh, have fun doing that. And I wouldn't have to draw it. It's the drawing that takes forever. It does take a long time. So basically a 30 minute show is like writing a comic and you don't have to draw it. You talk somebody into acting it out. So. Well, maybe you'll get that opportunity at some point. Maybe. Yeah. I think I would be an attorney. Well, you already are an attorney. <laughs> were going to say that. This woman knows contracts and reads every fine line and has that logical mind and is very intimidating in a big meeting full of powerful people. So yes. I wouldn't say intimidating. Uh, just frightening? No. <laughs> I would say knowledgeable. knowledgeable. I come prepared. That's what's so frightening. I come prepared. Nobody can bluff you. If you can't handle it, get out of the room. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm out. I'll go get the coffee. Yeah, this, this one knows, trust me. <laughs> okay, well, our second question is, I mean, we may have touched on this before, but um, would you like to see your work in color? Or are you a purist and want it only in black and white? Uh, I would like to see it in color. And this is something that actually I, I talked about with my pal, Jeff Smith. Both of us were uh, big admirers of Hergé Tintin. And Tintin was drawn originally in black and white. And then after it was purchased, um, the purchaser of the catalog put it, made it in color and put it out in those nice books that we now collect. Um, so the color came later. Um, and Jeff and I both thought that that was a wonderful model. He and I would make our stories in black and white. And then someday when somebody has the time and the resources, to go in and make color versions. And uh, I would be okay with that if long, as long as it was 
Of course, now I pictured my color version not being like a Marvel comic where everything is highly rendered, but more like a European flat colors. Yeah. Um, I think the flat coloring is gorgeous um, and it works so well for cartoon art. Um, so, well, Jeff actually did that with Bone. Yeah, and he got, yeah, so he's way ahead of the curve. And um, his book is, the color Bone book is absolutely stunning. But you realize it's two different animals. The original black and white version is, is historic and it's just got such a great place in comic art. And then the color one is gorgeous to look at. It it's, brings a new aspect to it. And it makes it readily inviting to people who are not normally into black and white comic art. Just a regular person who wants a fun story to read, you know, and is used to color television. It's hard to talk somebody that's used to cut watching movies to read a black and white book. How do you guys feel about that? Do you uh, like color over black and white or do you think stories, it depends on the story that you're reading, whether you want it in black and white or color. That's interesting. Yeah. There's always the risk that, you know, your black and white book looks like it came from the last century. So does it look modern? Um, that's a risk you take. I think you're, the art leads the way though over the color. So mm -hmm. if your art looks more modern, then, then I think the book holds, holds up well. When it comes to fashion and modern design, I'm a fan of black and white. Um, I read one time about uh, a woman who reached the age of 50 and she got rid of all of her clothes with color in them and just were, had either black or white in the closet. And I thought, that's not a bad choice. That's actually a pretty leading edge idea. So black and white, art on the wall, fine art and things like that, I'm, I'm a fan of it anyway. But that's just me, you know. I don't know if that speaks for the masses at all. But in terms of leading fashion, it can be very appealing, you know. Uh, sometimes color is, can be quite gosh. It can be what? Gosh. 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 Yeah, cut that part out, Gish. would you? No. <laughs> yeah, that needs to go. How do you say, how do you say gosh? <laughs> you just don't gosh. say it. G-A-U-C-H-E. See how she says that? That's so intimidating. Okay, this is it for me. I'm done. I'm making sausage balls today. Okay. That's that's my big project for the day. What are you drawing today? Um, well, I was thinking that we would draw... Oh, you've got that mouth that, I, that I'm not fond of. Oh, she, she doesn't like the... Um, the V mouth. The V mouth. And uh, if this is not... Nobody a, has a mouth like this that. This is not a V mouth at all. It's a U mouth. Nobody has a mouth like that. Uh, yes, they do. Um, anyway, I was thinking maybe emotional eyes. Um, I started with drawing just eyes and then I just did the face all around it. But um, the emotion starts from the eyes. And when you're having a conversation with somebody, it's you're focusing on the eyes. And especially the more intense the conversation gets, the more you just focus more and more on the eyes. So it really depends on what, how you're drawing these eyes. And I thought maybe I would try to draw some emotional eyes. And we see how to do that. What do you think? I say go for it. Fascinating? Absolutely. All right. Uh, not at all gauche. Okay. Gosh. <laughs> you guys have a good week. Meet Terry back here in a minute. Meet me here. I have this book in my hand for one reason, and that's because it has my favorite um, expression in there. Of all those pages that I drew of SIP, for some reason, this one really, I nailed it, and then I loved it so much. Uh, Kachu comes down, she's told she had a, a visitor in the gallery, her art gallery, and there's a guy there who looks very familiar from the back, and turns around and it's David, you see a little bit of surprise, and then she does this where she's about to start crying, and then, <clears throat> then you can see the uh, emotion in David's eyes too as they sparkle with a bit of um, emotion. But the expression on Kachu's face of like, huh, and she's, a, you know, the tears just instantly fill your eyes. And the, the little half smile, she can't believe it's him. She hadn't seen him in a long time. So that one drawing right there may be my favorite from all of the series. And it has everything to do with just kind of capturing the eyes. Um, I really caught a little magic moment there. 
people rarely do this, but when they but when they actually do this, um, this little reaction that she's getting, it's so charming. Anyway, uh, I'm using uh, Strangers in Paradise tomorrow now. Trade paperback 15 is where this is coming from. Um, so the eyes, big deal. It's a big deal. Um, when you're talking to somebody, um, like I said, you're focusing in on the eyes. And um, if they are looking at you and telling you something important, um, then that's all you're paying attention to is the eyes. You may start off by checking out somebody, the entire figure when they first walk up, because you just check and see if everything's normal and how they look and you're evaluating are they having a good day or a bad day by how they dressed and how they're handling themselves? And um, then they start talking to you and you begin to just like, the whole focus comes to here. And then if they start telling you either lies or I love you or something like that, you really start narrowing in on just like, are you telling the truth? Do you mean this? And then now it's all about the eyes, right? Because this thing can lie. It's hard to get these things to lie. <laughs> so when the crap hits the fan and we're trying to figure out, do you mean it? This is what we look at. So this becomes super important. It becomes like the middle of the wheel. This is the hub of the wheel. And all emotion comes out to like this. Um, this can lie. This can uh, give away the truth or help tell a lie. Everything from here on down can be designed to uh, be doing something different than what the eyes are doing. The eyes are supposed to hold your attention um, and um, the rest of it is trying to do what the eyes and the brain tell it to do. And one of the reasons maybe, you know, just in a logical sense, these eyes are, you look at the eyeball, where are they wired to? They're wired directly to the brain. I mean, it's the shortest path in the entire body from the brain to the eye. And the emotional centers up in here go straight to the eyes. So these guys get it full force. Um, and then probably the hardest thing uh, to uh, help lie to you is, I would say, your toes. I've never seen toes that lie because <laughs> they're too far from the brain. Uh, they've lost this. They've lost the command. They get the command got lost somewhere between the elbow and the knee. Um, okay, enough cartooning silliness. So draw. Um, cartooning eyes, uh, just start with cartooning eyes. Don't even think about, you know, oh, I need to draw a highly rendered uh, DC character. Just start with your basic eyes. If you had, because this is a way, if you do cartooning eyes like this, this is a way for you to go through eye expressions real fast and work on, um, getting things to see I didn't waste time drawing the entire face and the hair and the mouth and the nose I'm just going through here and just getting all these different expressions that I can think of out of the eyes that actually just looks like an egg or something doesn't it um okay so the thing about getting the eyes is it's easy to get the eyes to roll around. All I did was move the eye, the pupils around, right? Um, so how, what about expressions? What, how do you get the expression out of something that's basically this? How can that be so expressive? Um, you think you need all this other stuff around it, but you could um, mask all this off and have nothing but the eyes showing kind of like at the opposite of a ninja mask there. And we could still threatening, mad.
Let's cry. In order to, uh, to cry, the tear ducts come in and fill the eye with water. The whole eye gets uh, more covered in a sheen of liquid, but the tear ducts are, are right in here. And the water comes in and it sits on the bottom first. So when you're trying to draw somebody who's welling up with tears, you start with your normal eye up there, and then the, down here is where you have water building up. And that's just, you know, like the least romantic way to describe that I can think of. So there is somebody seeing something that's bringing them to tears, right? Just by having a simple reflection or not having, you can ruin that by coming down here and having the full bottom of the pup pupil showing, and then just have like that. That sucks. <laughs> That's not how to do it. Um, it Because there's a sheen over the eye, you, the sheen would touch the bottom of the pupil like that. So, without even drawing all the water in the bottom, Just draw that reflection that's happening off the bottom of the pupil. And actually, if you were doing some sort of coloring, the sheen would be almost like that. And sometimes you'll see sheens come horizontally. Like that. I've seen cartoons do that. You're just playing with where the reflections are in the eyeball uh, now that the eyeball is wet. So my tried and true way of doing this is to have something like this where I have a sheen off the bottom of the pupil and then show it a little more like that. There. Now, um, because the, the rest of the eye looks normal, it just looks like, okay, I'm just, uh, this is more emotion than I can handle. When you get into shock, you know, like uh, you just saw something horrible, the pupils can shrink, there's more reaction up here. That looks more like a Homer Simpson thing, doesn't it? Where you get more reaction like that. There. Suppose you're crying your eyes out. Maybe your eyes will be closed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there, that's how you draw crying. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay, happy eyes. Okay, if we're just neutral, this is clearly just a goofy cartooning class. Uh, if this is neutral, then it's not so happy. If you draw a happy, we tend to um, squeeze, squeeze the eyes like that, see? Although that could also be evil. Um, if 
that did evil. I'm like that. That's an evil laugh where you close your eyes. I think one of the things about um, the happy face is that uh, you show the eyes opening up because the face opens up. Um, you know, when you're depressed or angry or sad, the face begins to close down. And then when you're happy, uh, things open up. You know, maybe your nostrils are flaring and uh, the, the mouth opens up, the eyes open up. The eyebrows go up and, um, you know, so maybe even the ears are pulled back a little bit because the skin tightens on your neck. Um, let's see if we can draw... An ugly old man in love. That's something you never see that much enough of. Um, ugly old men tend to uh, absolutely adore their families a lot of times. Grandkids. Now that looks like um, not enough enthusiasm right off the bat. Looks like Marty Feldman, doesn't it? <laughs> ah, blocker. There, let's go ahead and make it Marty Feldman. Blocker. If you haven't seen Young Frankenstein, you don't know what the blocker joke is. Um, every time they said that, the horses. Um, a little bit of emotional uh, wetness in the bottom of the eye by just drawing half pupils like that. And this is the part that softens him up um, and makes him uh, a sweet guy, having a sweet moment. That's a very sweet smile and a little bit of um, this shows weakness, like uh, you've touched my heart type of weakness. This could also look uh, a lot like um, the professor, uh, Marty McFly's professor. But there you go. An old guy having a tender moment. So um, I just wanted to show you that real quick. Uh, basically, um, you know, play with the simple cartooning eyes. Play with where you're going to put your um, wetness, you know, to get the tears to happen. Eventually, when you become a master, you'll get to this point. <laughs> Oh, I'm so full of it today. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not very serious mood. I guess because I'm giddy because I finished another book. Um, so let's just end on this beautiful guy here, this sweet guy. And um, I hope you guys have a good holiday week. Uh, get ready for your holiday coming up. Uh, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, everything. So, all right. See you next week. Bye.